so yeah, this, this talk is about GeoTrellis and how we're working to add uh, geospatial capabilities to Spark. So a little bit, a little bit about what GeoTrellis is. Um, it's a Scala library that provides geospatial data types and uh, input and output for those data types. It uh, provides both raster and vector operations uh, or data types, uh, but mainly has traditionally focused more on raster than vector. We actually wrap ar around uh, the Java topology suite uh, to provide Scala uh, vector data types. Um, and we provide a lot of raster operations, uh, map algebra operations such as local operations, focal operations, and zonal operations, and some utilities uh, for creating web services. So really what, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm saying, I said geospatial data and I, I went through some map algebra operations, but if you don't really work in uh, the GIS uh, domain, those, those might be uh, unfamiliar terms. So who here works in geo and works with geo data? Oh, that's awesome to see. Uh, I'm so glad that there's so many geo people at a Spark Summit, that's, that's really exciting. Uh, for those of you who don't do GIS, uh, geospatial stuff, um, let me just briefly go over some topics. So vector data is data that, so geospatial data is uh, data that is, um, has to do with uh, some sort of spatial component, uh, whether you're describing an area of land or some, some property of the surface of the earth. Uh, like point data, you see there's, there's those markers up there on a map, that's uh, vector data, um, as well as like polygons that might be more complex, have holes, uh, and you'd want to do operations like take an intersection of those of those polygons. Uh, but what GeoTrails has traditionally worked with, historically, uh, focused on raster data and raster processing. So raster data is basically a matrix of cells that covers an extent of land. So this is an example of uh, raster data. It's a four by four raster where each cell um, covers a part of center city Philadelphia. And you could imagine that yellow represents one value and blue represents another value. Um, a more realistic raster data set is the national elevation data set, uh, which describes elevation of the contiguous uh, United States uh, at a high resolution, which is pretty, it, it's a open data set and it's uh, issued by the, the US uh, Geological Survey. So when I talk about what GeoTrellis is, it's a Scala library and it's really, if you're doing geospatial work with Scala, then we wanna provide um, library functionality for doing anything geospatial with Scala. And it was invented by a company that I work for called Xavier in Philadelphia. And we're a geo shop. We do uh, web maps. Um, we do a lot of uh, government and nonprofit work. Uh, Xavier is a B corporation which means we're a for-profit company, but we operate with a social mission, sort of like a nonprofit mission. Um, and we do, we focus mainly on geospatial uh, applications. So for an instance of like an application that Xavier might use GeoTrails for is to do uh, business siting based off of a, a number of factors, what's called a weighted overlay or suitability map, uh, where you'd weight various uh, geospatial factors against each other and then paint it on a map so that you could see where, where should I, uh, site my business. And the, traditionally the, the applications that Xavier has been using GeoTrails for have been sort of city scale. Um, so we're working with rasters that are, you know, around 100 megabytes. They fit in memory uh, and GeoTrails can chug through them really fast just out of memory. Uh, but we start to, you know, face challenges of, okay, what if we want to broaden the scale and all of a sudden we're working with, you know, the whole entire contiguous United States. This is a rough estimate of what that data set would be, about six terabytes. Um, so we start dealing with the issue of scale. And at the same time, um, Digital Globe uh, has been dealing with this issue of scale. They uh, have five satellites that are orbiting the Earth right now, taking imagery uh, constantly. And they have about 64 petabytes of uh, archival imagery data that they have to deal with. So they're really, they really have so much data and need to uh, do analytics on it in, in, in a scalable fashion. Um, so Amit Kinney, who's pictured here, he was supposed to give this talk, but unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, he was tasked with uh, finding a sort of next generation approach to dealing with uh, their uh, satellite imagery data. They have a Hadoop uh, MapReduce based 
solution internally, um, but he sort of was tasked with finding maybe uh, you know the next next uh, generation solution, and so contacted Xavier and GeoTrellis to see if maybe we could help. Um, so GeoTrellis has an execution engine that does uh, parallel operations across tiles. Um, it's based. It has a sort of like a homegrown uh, ACA based system that uses uh, ACA actors to uh, produce uh, operations over tiles, and it has uh, cluster capabilities with ACA clustering. Um, right when ACA clustering came out, we used that to create like ten node clusters that could do um, do some uh, some fast computation. But it's missing a, a number of uh, features, such as sharding raster data across the cluster. Um, you know, using HDFS, uh, caching operation results for iterative algorithms, uh, advanced fault tolerance, advanced scheduling, and I just sound like I'm reading a laundry list of Spark features. <laughs> so we were, we both kind of came to the conclusion, okay, if we could use the, the core algorithms, the core data types of GeoTrellis and put that on Spark, then that's sort of what would be the sweet spot of what we're looking for, try to take advantage of both of these libraries. Uh, Amit had come up with a really clever way to store um, tiles at various zoom levels in um, HDFS map files. And uh, I won't go into the, the, the map file storage, tile storage here, but uh, if you're curious about it, ask me about it later. Um, and we, so we created a raster RDD that has a custom partitioner based off of the TMS tile ID that um, allows each worker to work over one of the map files uh, in HDFS, um, takes, uh, takes advantage of, of you know, all the parallelism. Uh, and then we define raster operations in terms of Spark transformations, such as map partition. So we're, we end up mapping tiles and using the map partition function to maintain the partitioner through the transformations of the raster RDD. And the operations at the base level that are inside the map function are uh, GeoTrellis operations that um, you know have been used uh, a lot and have been around and are well tested. Um, so that leans on GeoTrellis to provide that uh, geospatial uh, functionality. And so we have some numbers. Uh, Meet did some benchmarking against uh, Digital Globe's MapReduce-based uh, system, and it really just blew it out of the water. Uh, we've we found. The combination of GeoTrellis's internal data types and its uh, algorithms, which are really optimized for just single-threaded speed, combined with Spark, um, really provided a lot of performance. So this is an ingest step. Uh, in ingest is uh, taking, say, 100 uh, gigs of GeoTIFF files that are striped across an HDFS cluster, converting it into the um, internal GeoTrellis da uh, data structure and tiling it and mosaic the, mosaicing the tiles. And uh, you see with 100 gigs of data, um, GeoTrail Spark took an hour where the MapReduce solution took over six hours. Another step that was benchmarked is building a pyramid where we take uh, the highest resolution raster data and then uh, iteratively downsample the rasters so that we can create layers that are of different resolutions so that if you're doing a worldwide operation and you don't need the highest resolution raster data, uh, you can do it over a, a less resolute um, raster. And again, we just see you know six times the performance. Um, adding rasters is a really simple, basic uh, operation that you could do with rasters. You just take every cell from the one raster and add it to the other. Um, it's sort of like matrix addition and. Um, again, we see a vast, uh, vast performance improvement. So, yeah, this, these, these numbers make it clear that, that we're headed in the right direction. Um, as far as disk space goes, uh, the, the two different data structures that um, are, are used uh, show a difference in the ability to compress them. So the GeoTrail Spark actually uh, uses a lot less disk space, which is important when tiles are being shuffled around a, uh, nodes of a cluster. Tiles tend to be sort of larger chunks of data, and you just you want it to, to minimize the the uh, latency there. Uh, while the code size, you know, this is not surprising. We're using Scala, uh, we're using Spark, which has a clean API. GeoTrellis has a clean API. We're just writing less lines of code. So, as far as the maintainability, um, 
standpoint, uh, we're really uh, not right in Java. Uh, and then, so you see the map algebra section. There's zero lines of map algebra code written for GeoTrail Spark because the, all that logic uh, exists in GeoTrail already. So as far as what's next uh, for GeoTrail Spark, we just need to flush it out. It's sort of in an infancy stage. Um, and we need to add more operations, including focal operations, which deal with tiles with neighborhood, which is a tricky problem as far as distributed systems go, but we did actually solve it in the ACA uh, engine, um, and we have to take that solution and br bring it to Spark. Um, creating web services that allow you to filter tiles down so you can have city, uh, city computations on vastly large data sets of the world, um, and possibly vector operations on Spark. Uh, sort of, you know, we're just, we're just trying to solve the geospatial problem at scale. So this is a problem space that I see, that many of us see, uh, is an, a real problem space that there's no open source solution that, that nails this problem. So we're proposing a solution or, or the, you know, direction of a solution with uh, combining GeoTrellis and Spark. And so if you have, if you're dealing with this problem, uh, doing geospatial data at scale. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Um, any, any improvement?